Okay. So we'll do a, just a short analysis on trying to understand this self-cherishing issue, this thing that makes us a coward, the thing that makes us the crow, and then how to kind of move through it and get to that peacock level. So I'll put some of the points on the screen, but it's only if you kind of lose the thread and forget what's happening, you can open your eyes and be like, oh, we're up to that point, okay. But otherwise, just keep your eyes closed and we'll do um, analytical meditation. So take a minute and find a posture that feels stable and that your back is as straight up and down as it can be. Just grounding yourself in the posture. And a few intentional deep breaths just to get yourself settled. And just do a very brief scan up and down and back and forth through your body, encouraging it to come into balance and alignment without forcing anything. Just being with your own body with a gentle gaze. And take a moment to revive your motivation. You can use the four immeasurable thoughts, thinking may all sentient beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. May all sentient beings be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. May all sentient beings never be separated from the happiness that is without suffering. May all sentient beings abide in equanimity, free from hatred and attachment, not holding some close and others distant. And with that motivation, start by trying to identify what self-cherishing is. This mind that has indifference to the welfare of others. It looks after our own needs, but not just from a practical needed perspective, but from a me first perspective that will look after oneself even at the cost of others or is just oblivious to your impact on them. That narrow focus. When self-cherishing is really escalated, everything is all about you whether it's your happiness or your suffering. And placing yourself at the center of the universe like that can be suffocating. Too much pressure, too tight, too narrow. Feels like a hero or feels like a victim, 
but somehow always the main character of the story of life. What is self-cherishing like for you? Just explore those ideas experientially. And so our first step in starting to overcome self-cherishing is to equalize self and others. And so first look at how one's percentage of emphasis of cherishing self over others, as opposed to how many more others there are than self. So in a normal day, how much time do you spend thinking of this self as opposed to thinking of all the other selves out there, all of humanity, all living beings, all beings with mind. A certain amount of looking after yourself is really important. But how much is too much? How much is avoiding the big picture? Not understanding interdependence. So in an ordinary day, how much time do you spend thinking of this self as opposed to all the other selves? Just honest and kind in your observation. And think the motivation of self, myself, me, and others, all the other selves, is equal or the same. We all want happiness. We don't want suffering. Even though our methods for getting happiness and suffering can be really different, we all have that drive. So use that information and see if you can kind of open into an affinity with others, some kind of connection. The people I love, the people who annoy me or scare me, who I dislike, the strangers, the acquaintances, other species, same. They just want happiness, contentment, stability, peace. They don't want suffering, pain, same as me. And then shift to identifying the disadvantages of self-cherishing. So for oneself, right now or in the past historically, how does it feel to give self-cherishing to others or to receive it from others? When your body, speech, mind, all your behaviors are driven by self-cherishing, what is that like for you internally? Start there. Does it feel like entitlement or justification? Does it feel needy and empty and hungry?
Does it feel annoyed and irritable? When you're operating from self-cherishing, And compare that with how it feels to receive behaviors of self-cherishing from other people. Does it feel like they're being inconsiderate or dismissive or disrespectful, indifferent, lacking compassion? Just think of the disadvantages both ways both when you're giving self-cherishing and when you're receiving it from others, both ways. Then just imagine what it might be like for others now and in the past How do others seem to feel and respond when self-cherishing is directed at them? Does it seem to be a condition for their suffering, condition for their afflictions to arise? What does it do when self-cherishing is directed at them? So obvious the pain it brings. And then switch and think of the advantages. When you're cherishing others, when your bodhicitta is growing, when your good heart is there, how does it feel to operate from that space? To give cherishing others to them. And the other direction to receive it from them when they cherish you. might be that everyone relaxes, that communication isn't so hard, that tasks are done more easily, that there's more fun and collaboration. And how do other people respond when you direct cherishing others to them? Can you notice the way that they open or settle? The way it encourages the best from them. and see if you can decide to actually exchange self for others or to exchange self-cherishing for cherishing others. And just be with the sense of choosing this practice for the benefit of yourself, others, and progress on the path. Let your choice resonate and sink in. Not forcing it. seeing if you can settle there on that conclusion. And then we'll dedicate. John to Sam Jorim Boshe, Marke Panam Kegyuichi, Kebanyam Pame Pai, 
Gone, gone, do pelwasho. Tony dawa rimboche. Ma ke panam ke guchi. Ke pan yam pa me pahi. Gone, gone, do pelwasho. Okay, so we'll stop for lunch and I'll see you after.